Dragons. Hey everyone and welcome to an episode of Suit Up. We're taking a look today at our brand new Queen of Gore and that is Garuda. You can get hold of her blueprints by completing the Vox Solaris quest in Fortuna and you'll get the blueprint mailed directly to your inbox and then the individual parts are from bounties out on the old Valis. Or you could just skip the grind and just buy her for flat straight from the market. Her entire theme behind her kit is killing. But unlike Valkyr, who is all about pure rage and vengeance, Garuda is all about elegance in the pursuit of her art, which is just pure killing. And boy do her abilities really support that. Her base stats are pretty decent across the board to be honest, without anything particularly standing out. Uh, shield and health both 300 at rank 30, energy is alright as well, 270 at rank 30. But a pretty nice armor amount of 300, and that means combining health and armor is probably going to be the best way forward for her in terms of the build, especially with her abilities. Let's start with the passive, which is very, very simple. The lower your health, the more damage she does with both her abilities and her weapons. This is in real time too, so if your health drops before your cast or your next shot, you're going to get the bonus damage from that immediately. And that's going to be that bonus, the damage bonus will be lost if you heal. That's honestly basically it for a passive, to be honest, there's not a lot to it. Uh, something to keep in mind though when you're playing is some tactical health loss, uh, especially when you use her 3. Um, just when you need to use your damage can be very, very useful. I guess her second passive though, I guess it's kind of a passive, and it's her personal melee weapons, and that is the claws that you see on her. If you've got no melee weapon equipped, these become used instead and are separately moddable. 10% crit, I mean it's technically enough for a crit build to be worth it. However, I went with a slash viral build status instead. Uh, slash viral status build basically to shred enemies quickly. Nothing that interesting here to be honest. There's no special mechanics. No, nothing really here whatsoever. So, I'm just going to quickly put up the build here for you just in case you want to see what I'm doing with it. So with those passives out of the way, ability time. Her abilities are pretty simple apart from well, one of them. Um, but there is quite a bit to them. First one is Dread Mirror. It looks simple, but there is an awful lot to take into account here. Basically, once you pounce onto an enemy, you're going to rip their life force from them and turn it into a protective shield and charge, uh, charging a Dread Heart that's part of the shield. If the enemy is below 35% health, you will straight up kill them, which is absolutely amazing since that scales crazily well. Uh, basically, when the enemy has more health and it's harder to get it down to that 35%, being able to finish, uh, like just straight up finish that final bit off is really, really nice. Let's split the ability down though into three parts, the leap, the shield and the heart. Well, the leap is affected by range mod and that's actually it. The insta kill isn't affected by mods whatsoever. One thing to note though is that honestly, the leap can be slightly derpy uh, because you need space to physically land next to the enemy. However, this means if they're near railings or any physical objects, so often you're going to get the target obstructed message and that can be kind of annoying, not to mention the fact that in the tight confines of some tile sets, occasionally it'll actually launch you straight up out of the map, which that definitely makes life interesting. Dread Shield itself, uh, it has no health on its own, it's completely invulnerable and will follow you around in front of you, blocking any enemy fire. It does have duration though, which is affected by mods, um, obviously duration mods. However, what's awesome is that the duration can be reset by recasting the ability, so it can basically last forever. No reason really to let it drop, except when you actually recast your, uh, well, basically when you throw out your Dread Heart, and that leads you onto the Dread Heart at the top of the shield. While the shield's active, the shield is going to double enemy, uh, like incoming enemy fire, and it actually stores it in the heart at the top of the shield. And it will also take 10% of the enemy's health that you've actually cast the Dread Shield on. So once you pounce, you like stab the enemy, it will take 10% of the health of that enemy and add it to the uh, to the heart, basically. The damage that is stored in the heart is displayed at the top of the shield, and you can see how much you've got ready for the next part. Um, basically the next part of the ability. The amount of enemy health that's converted into damage for the shield isn't affected by... Well, it's basically not affected by anything. Um, the incoming damage multiplier, though, that uh, doubling... You know, I said about doubling the incoming fire... That actually can be increased with the use of power strength mods, and that is really, really nice. So I mentioned that next part where you're going to hold your cast key. Garuda will take a hold of the Dreadheart and channel all of her energy into it, and that increases its total damage. 
Releasing the cast key will throw it out and it will explode on contact with something, dealing that damage to any enemy in range. The energy per second drain is affected by efficiency, explosion radius which is normally 10 meters is affected by range mods, and power strength mods don't affect anything on this ability at all. Uh, on this part of the ability anyway. Um, I think I think that's just about it for our first ability there. Like I said, there's a ton of stuff to it, but all in all, it is a super good ability. I think honestly, while the explosion does a crazy amount of damage, especially when combined with the, the, the mark from the fourth ability that I'll talk a little bit later about, plus the fact that it makes you completely invulnerable from enemy fire to the front, it's a damn good ability. The thing is though, I think one aspect that really gets overlooked when people talk about her the Leap is actually an incredible gap closer. Take the defense of the Extractors and the Orb Valus. They're usually, like, usually reasonably far apart, but that's no problem for Garuda. With a couple of range mods, that Leap becomes one of the best gap closers in the game, with her able to like teleport exactly to the enemy's location, not in the general area, but directly to them. Plus, with the guaranteed knockdown, it can also stop enemies from capturing interception points and all sorts of things. Uh, if you've got a spooled up heavy gunner, spooled up tech, just knock them down and they're not spooled up anymore. Dread Shield is an incredible ability and one that I use a huge amount when I'm playing Garuda. Thankfully though, from now on, her abilities are quite a bit simpler. They're good, but they don't need too much explaining. Firstly, Blood Altar. She's going to charge at an enemy and impale it on an altar of spikes. The targets will be completely disabled, but cannot die at all for the duration of the ability. Uh, you can stack damage on the target, so when you release it by recasting the ability, all that damage is instantly done to that target, um, and in most cases, it's going to die. However, while the target's immobile, it will send out a healing aura that will heal any person in the area of the ability, restoring 25% of the immobilized enemy's maximum health per second, and dealing 1% of their maximum health per second as direct damage. The range of the charge and the heal is both affected by the uh, range mods and the duration by duration mods and the health per second by power strength mods. There's not really much more to say about this ability to be honest. It's an incredible heal and synergizes amazingly well with her third ability as you'll see in a second when we go through it. To get the most out of this, pick the heaviest target you possibly can bombards, napalms, that sort of thing, because they've got the most health and they're going to give you the most amount of health per second back. Um, there are certain things that aren't currently able to be immobilized by it, uh, although I actually can't remember off the top of my head what they are, I just remember it having happened a couple of times while I was playing on the orb. Um, but uh, an AoE heal that can heal a crazy amount per second to everything around the altar gives her uh, some incredible map presence and, and, and like team, team ability. Like, the ability to, it really locks down a certain point, especially if you're defending a heavily attacked point during um, an interception, for example, or really anything with a static target. I hinted about her blood altar working with her third ability, which is the simplest by far, and that's called bloodletting. Basically, Garuda's going to slash herself with her talons, sacrificing her own health and converting that straight into energy. That's basically it. The mods affecting it though are what you would expect. You would think power strength would give you more energy, but it's actually efficiency that works at giving you more energy for the health lost, uh, with the health lost not being able to be changed whatsoever. That stays at a standard 50%. And that's actually it for that ability. Hit three, get energy, job done. Do it while inside your blood altar. You heal while you're getting energy. Nice and easy. Her fourth ability though is so much fun, and that is Seeking Talons. Garuda focuses by holding the ability key and summons talons, which when you release will hit everything in the reticule that comes up on screen. The longer you hold, the more energy you use and the larger that area becomes. Each talon deals 150 damage over time, uh, with a 50% chance to proc slash. Anything that isn't dead will be marked with her symbol, and the next hit on them has a chance to proc, uh, proc slash too. And that will tick for the amount that the of basically of the object that hit it. So, for example, you hit an enemy for 10k with a weapon, it will base the proc, the, the slash proc from that, and um, hit it with the damage from the dread heart. And yeah, you have one of the best scaling damage abilities in the game. The, dam the, the duration of the mark can be increased with duration mods. The damage and chance to proc slash can be increased with power strength mods. 
I love this ability so much. Watching all the bleed procs, it's so satisfying. And with it being slash procs, they ignore armor, which helps it scale. And then you have that wombo combo with a dread heart. Oh boy, all of the th all of the damage. But the thing is, people forget that honestly. Well, yeah, the instant AOE kill from that combo is good, and it looks good when you're in the simulacrum or whatever. Like. You can do crazy things with a high base damage weapon too, like a Rubico Prime. It's going to have a super, like, super high level targets bleeding out instantly too. So whatever you use, whether it's that combo or your average weapon, it is an incredible scaling ability. So how did I decide to go about modding Garuda? Well, I've actually got five former on here. It's really needed, especially if you're going for the Umbral build, uh, which I have decided to. I know it says 6 Vorma, but that's because I just sort of messed up a little bit with my uh, with my build. So I didn't really mess up, I was sort of test testing bits and pieces and an extra form is not really anything to uh, worry about to be perfectly honest with you. Um, in terms of the aura, we've got Steel Charge on here. She's very much a melee based frame, especially since if you're using her claws. So I went for this, but obviously you need this if you're going to be running the Umbral, uh, the Umbral mods. Uh, well, you need any of the ones that give you 18 points up here. Um, so we're running, as I say, three Umbral mods. Umbral Vitality for Health, Umbral Fiber for Armor, and Umbral Intensify for Power Strength. Now that Power Strength is going to work with Augur Secret and Power Drift to give us more Power Strength. You need at least 200% to get the uh, Slash Prop Chance up to 100%. So that is absolutely bang on the mark here. We've got Augur Rage and Stretch, which is going to increase the range of our um, first ability and our second ability. Um, the Explosion Radius on the first, as well as obviously the, the Heal Range on the second. Front Continuity is going to make the um, ability last longer. The first and the third, uh, sorry, first and second again, is going to make the ability last longer, as well as increase the bleed time on the fourth ability. The final slot, I've got Natural Talent in here right now. Um, the fourth ability takes quite a long while to uh, to charge up on the cast, so this actually makes it a bit quicker. It's not really needed though. You could actually, if you wanted to, switch it straight out for uh, streamline, which will give you more health back. Uh, sorry, more energy back when you cast your three. However, it's very much a personal preference thing. I prefer the natural talent, um, but I'm also going to like I'm planning on using the kit gun arcane a little bit later on. Uh, but I can't remember what it's called. Vox something or other. Um, but uh, it gives you power strength and it gives you uh, efficiency and that's what I'm going to be using in future to help to um, keep my energy up a bit more with Garuda is to keep that prog. so it's something that we can't get access to yet it's a little bit further down the line but uh, something I really really am looking forward to in terms of arcanes I'm running arcane guardian for extra armor very much very very nice especially when you've got uh, amber fiber Brings you up to like nearly 1500 armor, which let's be honest, is pretty solid. Um, and then I've got Arcane Energize as well. Now, Arcane Energize is one of those ones that's kind of like, do you really need it? I've got it on here as a bit of a backup, um, so I can just be like casting my ability for days and not to worry too much. However, you could always stick Grace in there for some regeneration. You could, since you're taking a lot of damage, you could always decide to put Arcane uh, Awake. Awakening, I want to say, not Awakening. I can't remember what it's called now. Avenger. Avenger's the one I wanted. Um, okay, an Avenger on here it works as well for extra crit chance when you take damage. There is a lot you could do here. I prefer the extra little bit of help that Energize gives, and I don't have to rely on my three quite so much because obviously casting your three, lowering your health, can put you in danger a little bit. So Energize really helps me in that sort of regard, but isn't really needed. Sando build, however, is very much uh, a very similar sort of build. Uh, we got growing power this time because we don't need all of the, uh, basically all of the mod capacity that uh, the steel charge gave us. This time for tra um, for the uh, power strength, we got power drift, transient fortitude, and auger secrets. This is going to give us 194%. Doesn't isn't quite at the 200% mark, but when you got growing power going, that is at the 100% mark, very very nicely. We've got a bit more duration in this build, so Constitution and Prime Continuity. This is obviously because we've got to try and counteract the Transient Fortitude that's in here. Bit unfortunate really, but hey. Vitality and Steel Fiber is going to be our, uh, our survivability here. 
uh, so health and armor. And then we've got stretch and auger reach once again for the range. It's not quite as uh, strong as the umbral build, however, it is definitely a very solid build still. Um, I've used this build quite a lot, especially if you're using like the thing is the status effects with weapons. It, it's so easy just to use something like a pretty much anything basically that's going to apply status blocks. It's very very easy to keep growing power procs all the time. And it means that you're always going to be above that 100% uh, chance to proc slash. So it's a it's a very very solid build. I've got the same basically the same choice of arcanes here as well. But sort of either build works. Um, I much prefer the umbral build because more health, more armor, and roughly the same sort of stats. And you don't have to rely on growing power. It's, even though growing power is not too much of an issue, I don't have to rely on it. So it's one of those ones that is. Uh, it's going to be down to personal preference. I, like I say, I very much prefer the Umbral. I, I really do think this is by far the stronger build. But if you don't have the ability to do the Umbral, then this works just as well. So after all of that, what do I think of Garuda? Do I think she's worth the investment of the former onto not only her, but also her claws? And yeah, oh boy, do I think it's worth it. Let's put it this way. Unless the Nyx rework really makes her amazing, Garuda is likely to take over as my favorite frame in the game. She is ridiculously tanky, combining that shield that makes her invulnerable from the front, the blood altar giving her crazy health regen, bloodletting giving you basically infinite energy, and the seeking talents providing not only the instant gratification of seeing that you've given quite a few enemies a bad day on the battlefield in front of you as they're bleeding crazily to death, but the crazy damage potential of the mark as well. Seeing it, like, either being being done with weapons or using the Dreadheart for that instant burst. Oh boy, I, I can't stop going on about how good she is. She's got a couple of problems though. Firstly, is that sometimes your leap from the jet Dread Shield will throw you through the wall in some of the tighter tile sets. And obviously you can get the target obstructed thing. And that is a rather annoying thing to happen. But, you know, that's not a problem obviously on the Orb Valleys or over the plains. For the, but for the rest of the game can actually happen rather a lot and I assume that will get fixed fairly quickly and well I guess I when I said a couple of problems I over exaggerated a bit because that's all I can really think of um, I've had a silly amount of fun playing with her so far though even when it gets to a crazy like alert level 4 inside the corpus bases I'm still able to survive more than well enough despite there being like 4000 ability nullifying combos and random enemies with nullifier bubbles while my teammates might be falling around me, their pets going down, I'm still standing, still reviving them and their pets. I think you can tell just from this, like, just how much I rate Garuda. I'm going out on a limb here and I'm going to straight up say she is a perfect frame. I don't think they should change anything about her whatsoever. I am amazed with the saga, like, that was both Korra and Revenant and their 400 reworks before they are in the state that they're in now. Garuda being amazing straight off the bat is something I'm hugely happy with and honestly, whoever designed Garuda, I'm buying him a beer at Tenacon next year. Nyx has a contender for my favourite frame because right now, I don't really want to play much else. So I hope you enjoy my uh, like in-depth look at Garuda. I'm going to have a video coming on the other weapons fairly soon. But for now, many thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next one.